Hey everyone, we are back again with yet another episode of the Marketing Share Podcast. I am your host, Alec Chung, and with me as always is my good partner in crime, Barb Van Summeren. And today's guest is Matt Hines with the Hines Marketing. Um, and we asked Matt to come join us today because uh, Barb and I recently uh, became part of a marketing community on Slack that uh, Matt is uh, and his company are the hosts of. And we found the community have, have found the community to be so um, positive and helpful for us for, to us that we thought it would be great um, to talk to Matt about just you know marketing communities in general because it, to yeah. me I think you know communities are one aspect of the marketing mix that we know is out there but not as many companies do it right but yet I think the ones that do and do it well find that communities can be a very powerful component right right Barb. Yeah, you know, I think about I've been part of a community for professional groups, right? I've been part of a community actually for people with getting their hip replaced, you know, all sorts of kinds of things. You can be part of a community. And I think there's a real knack to doing it well. And I think the key is authenticity. And so today it's not just about building um, a community. It's about building an authentic one. Mm -hmm. And that's why we thought um, the one Matt did um, is really applicable to today's discussion. So I'm super psyched to have you here, Matt. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about how you got started with this community. We call it the CMO, Chief Marketing Officer Coffee Talk, right? You just do. tell us how you got started with it and how it all evolved. Yeah, I mean, it's a fascinating story. I think, you know, I think especially now sort of post COVID, I mean, we're all doing this from our homes and basements. Um, I think community is more important than ever. Uh, we don't have as regular that office environment in some cases. So doing this in a community format and providing sort of a place for people not just to learn, but really to sort of get to know and care about each other, you know, build relationships and even friendships when there's some common bond between you and the others in the community for whatever it is, whether you're CMOs or your parents, or you just had your hip replaced or whatever that is. Um, so I think, you know, we, we had been doing a CMO breakfast for several years uh, hmm. prior to 2020, and they were in-person breakfasts as we get 25, 30 CMOs into a room and just keep it real simple, right? Just like who you are, where you're from, um, and, you know, just a little bit, you know, we, and we just get people together and just like share some bacon and let them talk. And hmm. obviously, you know, the, the pandemic kind of shut that down for a while. Well, we had been working with, you know, MarTech vendors throughout doing that um, and had been inviting, you know, some some partners to come with us. And, um, we had done a 10 city tour with six cents at the beginning of 2020 and we got through eight cities before COVID shut us down. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there was like a Friday, like we got, we, we couldn't do the last two cities. And so there was a Friday where like, let's just do one more on Friday. We'll do it virtual, give everyone an Uber Eats card, whatever. And, um, we'll just, we'll just, that'll be it. Right. So this, that Friday happened to be the week that COVID kind of got real, right? Like, you mm -hmm. know, Tom Hanks announced that he had it, the NBA shut down, um, so we, we show up Friday morning thinking we were going to have this digital comfort, digital transformation conversation. Mm -hmm. and we had about 28 people show and they were just frazzled from the week. I mean, like you think about the things that they had been through trying to sort of right size their companies, their teams, their customers, their families. It was a very cathartic meal, yeah. right? And it, but it was sort of a lot of people that had a similar job at different types of companies, just sharing what they were doing to get through the week and what they think next week will look like. And then at the end of it, someone said, well, the next week's going to be, you know, a bit of a, you know, what show as well. Can we just do it again? Sure. We'll just do it again. So that's how it started. It started with 28 people, got about 2,400 now uh, that are part of it, just CMOs and heads of marketing, you know, three plus years later, still going strong. So uh, that that number just about you know floored me right now. So you started with twenty eight, and you yeah. have how many? I I know there's a couple of calls. How many is that? Yeah, there's twenty. Well, there's twenty four hundred members of the community. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and look, I mean, not, not all of them come every week. So we do Friday morning sort of Zoom meetups. We do one eight a.m. Eastern, another eleven a.m. Eastern to sort of capture up all the coasts. Mm -hmm. We get a little over three hundred CMOs that'll come on average to you know the combined events. But then the majority of the engagement, as you mentioned, is in Slack. I mean, the Slack channel just lights up on a regular basis with all kinds of different discussions. Everything from, 
you know, your first six months in a new CMO job to sort of needs and leads. Who's got a template for this? Uh, some people tell us, a lot of people tell us their favorite channel is in fact the rants channel where mm -hmm. you can go and just complain mm -hmm. about stuff. Um, yeah. and, um, we do like, it's funny, funny. We call, so the, we, the community, we call it uh, CMO coffee talk. We kind of familiarly refer to it as first sip club for sip club in the morning. And then about once a month, we will have a, a midweek session called last sip club, which we call liquor and complaining. And so that literally is just, it literally is just sort of like a CMO happy hour on zoom to just talk about whatever you want to talk about. Um, and in here, I mean, you're talking about like what makes a community successful. I like get a lot of communities that we see are really glorified mailing lists. They're glorified yeah. channels for a company just to, just to talk to customers. A good community is community driven. It's driven by the people in the community and it's, it evolves to something that people where people care about each other. They care about and support each other in ways that go, and I've got some great stories to share around that, but they go, you know, that it's, it's more than just the job. It's mm -hmm. about the people in the job. Mm -hmm. And that's a, con that's a steady best practice for all the communities I've seen successfully is the people care about each other and it's about more than just the work you're doing. Yeah. So, so true. You know, I'm curious, uh, have you ever done a community before uh, or was this your first time and did you just sort of learn as you were going? Well, I mean, I've done communities before, but nothing at this scale. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I've been, I've been, I've been able to participate in and help drive communities that others started. Um, we had a great one at, I worked at a company, we were in residential real estate. We had a, you know, realtors from around the country that okay. were in a community that was very successful. Uh, I learned a ton from being part of top liners, which was the Eloco community. Mm. Um, and Heather Fay really originated that. She actually is at Six Sense now. Um, mm. she's the head of community and customer success there, success there and kind of oversees sort of the work we do together with CMO Coffee Talk, as well as a great community they've built for their customers. Um, but I think the other thing is I've seen communities that don't work. I saw mm. what happened yeah. to Eloqua's top liners when Oracle acquired it and made changes to make it more product centric and really killed. Mm what made it a great community. Um, even today, like I look over here, I got a screen that's just Slack, that's just Slack and it's got all these channels. And yeah, I mean, some, some communities really are sort of highly engaging. Others just would die if it weren't for the company continuing to post things. And that's great if yeah. you've got that as a channel, but that's, that's a marketing channel, not a community. Yeah, I, I think it's a fine line to your point, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I've participated in several where um, the value to the member was kind of soft yeah. and the pitch <laughs> was kind of prominent. Yeah. So how do you keep that balance right in the one I'm in with you? I mean, how do you do that well? Because, you know, everybody has a desire to grow their ambition. They have ambition, right? So how do you temper that? Well, we got a pretty strict no pitch policy. Uh, and we say like, you know, you cannot solicit other people in the community. And that goes for me too. Um, you know, it goes for six cents. I've been really, really thankful that Latin Econet, who's the CMO at six cents, who has been a phenomenal partner, uh, in building and growing this with her team. Um, from the very beginning, she was aligned with this. It would be really easy for someone to say, listen, we're going to do this together, but we're going to need to have a monthly what's going on with six cents session, or we're going to need to sort of, you know, have some like BDRs that are in the community that are sort of engaging with people like that would kill it because that would make it not a safe place. So we say we, these are not, you cannot pitch in this community anywhere. The Friday sessions are not recorded, which mm -hmm. is people think is like every week we go, Oh, I missed that session. Can I get the recording? No, we don't record it. I don't mm -hmm. want a record of this. I want people to be able to come and share the good and the bad in a place with their peers that they know is safe. Mm -hmm. right? So, I, you know, that said, I mean, I think about a lot of things you could do, in, you know, all the different things you could do in marketing to sort of build trust and reputation with your target. So just candidly, I mean, there's, there's everybody in the community knows me. I, I would imagine there's a lot of people in the community in SEMO Coffee Talk that actually don't know that, like, I run a marketing consulting firm and there's like 18 people back here, not, mm -hmm. or, you know, metaphorically back here that want to get paid every other week. Mm -hmm. So, like, but I, can't, I, I will break the model if I pitch. Now, that said, if I build good relationships with people, if they like what I have to say, if they're seeing and following what I do, eventually I'll earn trust and be able to have that conversation. And, you know, we, we, I can see every member of the Coffee Talk community, they're in Salesforce, they're in a Salesforce campaign. I can see attribution that way. And it, it's, you know, look, it's paid off really well because I'm not pitching, 
right? Yeah, and I think yeah. that is re- that is a hard lesson for a lot of companies when they want to build a community. It is hard to have that level of patience and discipline. Like we've been doing this for over three years now. Um, and again, just thankful that Sixth Sense and Latney have been so strongly aligned with that perspective. It's a big part of what's made it successful. It- yeah, I think that's that's a key part, isn't it? Because I, as you were talking, right, the thing that kept going through my mind is that the, the communities, the hardest part, I think, about communities is that you have to understand that it's an indirect marketing tactic, right? I mean, the, the best way to do it is to almost like not, you know, not do what you think you're supposed to do, but go the opposite way. But in so doing that, you're going to build that trust, which is really, at the end of the day, how you are going to, um, uh, how, how the benefit is going to accrue to you. Yeah, it's an indirect pipeline producer. Yeah. It's a very direct marketing channel. Right? Good, I mean, yeah, it's because yeah, great I mean, like, way to say got, so we'll, we we don't get 2400 people all active in Slack all the time, right? Mm-hmm. And people come and go, but we've got stats and sort of alerts to say if someone drops off, "Hey, where'd you go? We miss seeing you." But you know, every week 2400 people get an update email from me that says like, "Here's the topic for this week. Mm-hmm. Here's the resources that we shared from last week." I'm in Slack most weekdays doing something or responding or facilitating something. They see me Friday morning. Mm -hmm. So the volume of impressions you can have with a target audience in a good community Mm -hmm. is really, really powerful. Mm -hmm. And the other thing to keep in mind, like it may take time to sort of build that community, but this is owned land if you do it right. Yeah. Right. You know, if you don't have a reputation, if you don't have an audience, if you don't have people coming to your blog or your website, your podcast, your community, you have to find your audience somewhere else. Someone else that has built that community or built that audience has it, and you are renting land from them, right? Mm-hmm. It takes time and effort to build your own media channel. Yeah. But then it's your then it's owned land. Now you can screw that up really quickly. Like we could very quickly start pitching and uh, you know like allow advertisers and the advertisers start pitching, and then all of a sudden people are like, okay, bye, we're going somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So you have to protect that. But boy, the competitive advantage of having that own land. And having, you know, that direct value added engagement opportunity with the right audience, even if you're not directly pitching, even if you explicitly treat it as, as not a pipeline producer, it'll still have that effect, you know, and that, and, you know, you don't have to, you're not beholden to whether you still have budget to buy ads. You're not beholden to whatever algorithm Google choose to launch. It's relationships that you can, that you have to continue to earn and maintain. Mm-hmm. That own land is pretty powerful. Yeah. You know, um, I think, Matt, um, when I first experienced um, the the Slack channel and the coffee talk, I also found, you know, it was really valuable, the conversations, right? And because mm-hmm. you don't record the conversations, people are mm-hmm. really coming with real challenges they're having in daily life, right, in their jobs on a daily basis. And then what you do is if there's some energy, I've seen this, you know, in real time. There's some energy around a topic. Somebody said, hey, I really solved that. I think I've got to solve for this particular area. I think in this case, it was about um, how to demonstrate marketing's value to the board, right? Yeah. And um, she had spoken about that. And then there, you could see everybody's head go, wow, that would be an mm-hmm. interesting topic. And then from there, it became an, another topic in another couple of weeks that we actually covered in depth. Yeah. Is that typical? Does that, is that how a lot of um, you know new material comes up? Oh yeah. No, we, we never run out of stuff to talk about. Um, and I think, you know, it used to be like back in two, early 2020 when things were changing so quickly, like we literally with the group of 20 for eight and then 30 and then on, we would do like a Monday morning survey saying like, here's a handful of topics we think would be interesting. Which one do you want to cover this Friday? And eventually we got to the point where we would do those surveys once a month and then once a quarter. Um, and we still pull directly out of threads. Like we'll look at what's ha- being discussed in Slack and say, which of these seem particularly prescient? that can be a group conversation on Friday. Um, and we actually don't publish the upcoming schedule out too bro- too, lo- too far out because mm-hmm. it's always changing, right? We're always like, and we literally had the other day or, you know, earlier this year, you know, we had the Silicon Valley bank uh, fiasco, yeah, right? right? And that kind of happened in real time. Right. And it ended up being sort of a short impromptu conversation that Friday. But we said the following Friday, given like after the weekend, they had been like, it seemed like people's money was safe. But we're like, what the hell just happened? Like, and how do you avoid this next time? And what do marketers need to know about this level of finance? So we said, screw it. We're this this coming Friday. We had some other topic, but we threw it out and said, we're just going to say, like, what does this mean for you? 
We did one recently where we pivoted and just talked about um, declining win rates, right? And the fact that mm -hmm. most people's funnel metrics are significantly um, looser now. And what do you do to address that? Um, so it's really a very community driven editorial calendar. And the beauty of having both the Friday sessions as well as the Slack is that you know, like we had a, you know, you have a conversation in an hour, you don't quite get to everything. There are questions we don't get to. I'll be right over here. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, you know, not only it's, it's not only the fact that it's not recorded, but also you have to be a CMO or a head of marketing to be part of it. Now, if you're a fractional CMO, we got a, like hundreds of fractional and advisory CMOs uh, during the group now. Um, but, you know, we, we want to have that narrow audience. We want to have a group of people that literally have the same job. Now, some people, bigger companies, smaller companies, publicly held, family run, whatever. But you have to run marketing to be in. And I think that also helps with the quality and level of discourse that we want to help facilitate to really look. I mean, like I'm sure everybody has a long list of potential Slack channels and communities they can be part of. Why does, why, why do you stay with this one? Why do you sustain with this one? Why do you keep coming back? And so, you know, the, the quality of the, of the participants and the quality of the content has to stay high. Like I get, we, so every, we've been doing it for three years now. I get nervous every Friday morning before we do them. Like I want everyone <laughs> to be amazing. The topic conversation, some of that's all the setup and who you bring in the topic. Some of that is facilitation, make sure you get good. But like, I want every one of them to be awesome. And I think that's part of our kind of day one mentality, so to speak with the community that you, 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 I think you got to have that to sort of keep your edge. Yeah. The, the nervousness never goes away, right? That's what you're saying. <laughs> Well, I mean, Tiger Woods once said, he said, if I'm not nervous before a big tournament, like something's wrong. So, yeah, right? yeah. Like, you know, the nerves yeah. are there for a reason. And I, you know, I think, I don't know, like I, I just, I just feel like in life, but especially in a, in a community like this, you have to bring your best every day. You have to prove it and earn it all the time. You mm -hmm. have to stay humble. Like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, if, if you stand back and look at what, you know, Latin and I have built with this, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. But I don't spend a lot of time like, I mean, you don't, that's not something you bask in, right? Like I just, you put your hard hat on, you go to work, you provide mm -hmm. value for people, mm -hmm. you stay true to what you're good at. And that's what I think sustains it. Yeah. I, one point that you made that I think is really good at, at, and may go un, um, unnoticed, but so I'm glad you said it. Having that really narrow definition of who is in the community, I think that seems like it's also a key, right? Because if you start getting, because it's the commonality, right? All of us have some common thread that yeah. we may come from different backgrounds, different companies, different industries, but we still yeah. have a common thread. And that common thread helps uh, uh, tie at least every aspect together. So I think that that's also a really big thing. I'm glad you said yeah, that. Yeah, it is. And, and I, I, again, I have to credit Latney for that because, you know, the CMO breakfast that we were doing, you know, we'd let directors and every once in a while, if they were at the right company. And so we now say, listen, you have to be a head of marketing. Now, if you don't have the CMO title, maybe your title is head of marketing. Maybe you're, yeah. title, maybe you're actually a VP. Yeah. But if you are the senior most marketing person at your company, you're in. Right? You're, yeah. And it's really hard to turn some people away. Right. Again, yeah. so right. talk about like being being a not pipeline producer. Like there are senior directors at companies yeah. I'd like to do business with is from a consulting standpoint True. that I can't let in. Right. Right. Now, I, I've got some friends running running or, um, other communities that are definitely more sort of up and coming marketer communities. So I'll send them their way and sort of make sure yeah. they're being taken care of. Yeah. But yeah. No, I think you have to be really clear about who you are and who you're not and find and maintain and defend your space um, in the yeah. landscape. Well, it's about brand building, right? And you're building mm -hmm. a brand in this um, community and you're true to it. Right. So you don't pitch, which yeah. I think is important. The other piece you mentioned was you started with the right intention, right? Mm -hmm. The intention you started was to help people. It was the sounding board. We were, you were, you're trying to work through challenges during a pandemic, right? Yeah. Um, so I think you start it in the right space and that's really important. Hey, inevitably these marketing CMOs, right? They're CMOs, you know, what, what's our average tenure now? Four years in a company? Yeah, Inevitably, yeah. they are gonna be moving on at some point. Yeah. So if you have someone in transition, because I've heard, you know, some folks in transition, yeah. how does this kind of a relationship and networking benefit those folks as well? Oh man, I mean, so again, like one of the things I'm really proud of with this community is that we're about the people, uh, not the, just the job. You know, the very first in in late 2021, we did our first um, in person meetup. We did sort of a CMO retreat, hmm. and uh, we had about 130, 135 people come to. I think we did the first one in Austin, 
And when we thought about like, okay, what content do we want to have? What kind of content? What style of content? We had four areas of focus. I, and it was, it was my impact, my career, my life, my legacy. Mm. And three of those four really aren't about the job, right? It's about you. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're in transition, whether you got let go or whether you've just decided to do something different, like a community of your peers is here to support you, right? Uh, we have a CMO roles channel in Slack where everybody getting pitched from recruiters, whether you're looking or not, just screen share, put it in there, right? Um, you know, we've, especially this year, a lot of CMO turnover seems to be happening so far in 2023. You know, we begin the Friday meetings just saying like, hey, anybody in transition or looking, or if you're about to start looking, but we're not recording this, your boss isn't here and want to tell us, like, I think I need to go somewhere else, let us know. So, you know, you don't have to be an active CMO if you're in transition, if you're looking for something else, even more important that we double down and support those people. Um, and then we have in Slack, we have a, a first six months channel that is specifically for people that are new to their job, right? New to that new CMO job. They may have been CMO before, but they're in a new company and it's full of, you know, not first 90 day templates. It's full of board deck presentations it's full of you know questions to go ask you know your board and your customers as you sort of do your fact finding and so again like you know being able to support that and then also you know to that point about being beyond just the job mm -hmm. we had a session once about you know how to get into on more board roles for yourself as a cmo what happens after the cmo role right. what's next in your career uh we did in the um in the retreat we did last year we had a you know living legacy session where we said like what do you want like your legacy isn't what exists when you die. Your legacy is what you build now. And we talked about the idea that like, if you're a CMO, you've been successful in your life and career. And so how do you treat success as a starting point and a platform to do what matters? And what matters is what you are passionate about, right? So we sort of had that time to sort of think about that broadly. It's not about MQLs. It's not about board presentations. It's about what's really important in life. So anyway, I'll get off my soapbox, but I think it's important that we make sure this is a community about the people and know that those people sometimes have challenging jobs, sometimes are between jobs. Um, and that's what we're here to support. I love that. It, it's, uh, that's one of the big things that I've noticed being part of it is that just how, how, um, good the community is to its members. I think you've done a great job of that. Um, I think for our, our, a lot of our listeners who are listening to this, they'll be like, okay, yeah, like this is a great example of the benefits of community, but they're probably thinking, okay, but does it make sense for my company to start a community? Right. So I don't know if you, what thoughts do you have? What could you share there? Like, what are the criteria maybe to think about when you should in, uh, include the community in your, in your mix? Right. And does it make sense for, for every company to, to have it in their plan somewhere? Yeah, I, I think it, it, it's, you, you got to really go back to your objectives and what are, what are you trying to achieve? Um, literally yesterday, there was a, there was a thread in the CMO Slack app for someone says like, we're thinking about starting a community. Who should run it? Marketing, CS, product, like where should it be? Yeah. And the answer from a lot of people is it depends on what your objective is. Like if you're trying to create a customer community, what's your objective? It might be to create people that care about each other, but it also might be you're trying to subsidize the cost of help desk tickets, right? Mm -hmm. You're trying to get more people to learn in a community with an attached wiki or from each other. So there is an escalation. So your customer success operational costs are lower, mm -hmm. right? Okay, that's fine. And so then it's not just a community about people talking about whatever it is a product component. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, we saw that in the Eloqua top liners as well, right? Where, you know, Eloqua had a community of customers that were helping each other with the product. Mm -hmm. And then it evolved to people caring about each other. And so that became sort of a good sort of mixed best practice. Mm. Um, you know, or you can make it not about your product at all, right? A friend of mine um, here in Seattle uh, is uh, started a company uh, that's all about um, sort of higher end camping gear. And he is uh, specifically focused on sort of this emerging category of car camping, mm. right? So he's, his company, his company is called Hest and he now runs an annual event called the Hestival, right? Which are car oh. campers that get together for a weekend and just like, just chill with each other, right? Okay. And so in that case, like, it, obviously there's, there's that shared experience, but it's not about the products, right? And so, you know, who is the audience you're engaging? Like if you're B2B marketing, do you want to create something for the CMOs? Do you want to create something for the operational leaders? What is it? And then what are your objectives out of it? And then how do you stay true to that? 
moving forward? How do you keep it focused on that thing? I've seen, like I said before, communities that start well-meaning, and then you can tell when someone internally said, we need more ROI from this, and all of a sudden, well, our CEO has decided to join this community and wants to chime in in meetings. I'm like, okay, out. <laughs> I have totally had that experience, okay, where we were in actually a focus group for research on a product that we were coming, a technical product that we were coming out with, and somebody goes, can't we turn this focus group into like a commercial? And I'm like, no, that's a commercial. <laughs> you know, we recruited these people to give us their opinions, not to sell them something. Right. So, you know, that is it's really important slope. not to cross that line. It's a slippery slope. And I think it's sometimes in the moment it can feel like I've got them here. You know, I've seen this so many times when, you know, people say, hey, we're going to do we're going to do a lunch at the uh you know, at the conference, we're going to invite people to lunch. We're going to tell people it's just an opportunity to network. And then all of a sudden, like the PowerPoint comes out. You're mm -hmm. like, wow, it seems like a bait and switch. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I have them in the, uh, in the room. I'm like, this event is not meant to be a close the deal conversation, right? Like there are some instances, whether you're selling timeshares or whatever else that might be like, you don't leave the room until you buy. But if you're in B2B, you usually have a more complex process than that. Mm -hmm. If you if you treat the lunch or the B2B breakfast or the CMO coffee talk with respect, you earn the right to have that product conversation later. Right? Yeah. You don't have to have the pitch in the room, but you gave someone a gift of a great lunch and a networking opportunity. They're more likely to say yes if you respectfully come to them after. It's part of the body of work of a real campaign versus trying to shoehorn too much into uh, shorter sessions. So along those lines, is a community better or more suited probably for a long B2B sales cycle versus B2C? Because I've been in both, but yeah. I'd be curious to see what you think. I don't know that one's better than the other. I think, you know, one of the, I think one of the benefits of having a community is that in B2B is that most of your prospects aren't buying right away. Right. And so, you know, you have the opportunity to stay engaged with them until a point where enough things are going on in their business that they have a need that you could potentially solve. Um, you know, if you have a vibrant community of people that feel safe to share with each other, the amount of intense signals and trigger events that you can see and hear in a community like that, significant. Um, you know, and you can't say like, oh, I saw you talking about whatever in the community. I'd like to connect you with the salesperson to talk about a solution. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, if you say, if you said, hey, I, I, you know, I saw you talking about that problem. I'd like to connect you with a couple other community members that have dealt with that recently as well. It happened to be our clients. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I mean, there's a, there's a natural and value added way to make those connections. And so I do think that, um, again, like, you mentioned, I think Alex, you make, Alex mentioned that, you know, this isn't a pipeline producer. No, but the, the volume and quality of interactions you have with people mm -hmm. allows you to be there in the moment when they have a need. And you're the incumbent at that point because you've been providing that value to them all along. Yeah. I think what I'm hearing you say also in your answers here in a couple of last couple of questions is that there, there are different varieties of communities, whether it's B2B or B2C, but also based on the user groups and, and what your intent is. And I think mm -hmm. that's a really good point for, you know, people to understand too. It's like not, not every community is going to be the same because right. of who you're targeting and what you're trying to do. And that's, that's okay. That's actually the way it should be. They're going to, they're going to feel a little different, but yet, but the success behind them still can be common even though they might feel different. Yeah, 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 I think so. You know, I'm hearing too, um, wherever there's a shared experience, right? Like, um, you know, I had a product that was a seven year cycle, a, a mm -hmm. B2C seven year cycle, right? Hearing, right, is very emotionally charged. So if you're in a situation where you wanna share your experience because it was embarrassing or you yeah. don't know how to work something, yeah. I mean, all those things, the sharing is so important and that can mm -hmm. add to the, value the community right i want to tell one of my favorite stories from this community um and it has nothing to do with being a cmo um oh. you know i had someone and this is again sort of that shared experience and that shared life place in life where you know if you're a cmo you're probably not right out of school you know we have a lot of people with kids a lot of people with families like lots of different competing priorities you know we had a we had a subgroup of enterprise cmos do a zoom last night and had a couple people in their car doing kids pick up based on the time we did it and where their time zone was so we had someone reach out to me it's about a year a little over a year ago and they said um i'd love to get some feedback from this community but i don't want people to hear it to come that it came from me can you post something on my behalf um my daughter is struggling with anorexia and it is becoming a full-time job for me to support her 
and find out how to where to get her help and get her to appointments. And I'm struggling with how to do that while also maintaining, you know, focus and results on the job. I can't be the only person that is that is going through this. Can can you see if there's someone else in the community that would be willing to talk to me? So I posted something like that um, in the sort of like needs and leads. And I had 17 people respond, hmm. 15 of which uh, had were parents that had either been through it or were going through it. Two of which said I was that child. Hmm. And I'd love to be able to share with you my perspective from there that that may be able to help you as well. Hmm. That blew me away. Yeah. Um, and is, is one of my favorite examples of a community that just comes together for each other. And that is a very, to me, that is a very special, sacred thing that is worth protecting at all costs. Cause I, you know, where else do you, where else can you do that? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there aren't very many other places where you can sort of be that vulnerable, but also get that kind of response and love back. That's powerful. Uh, yeah. The testament to the power of community. I mean, it's great. Yes. Um, okay. So let's say you've decided, Hey, we want to try this. We want to do a community. You mentioned mm -hmm. earlier on, um, in this conversation that you've got 15 people behind you, you know, working on this. I'm hoping it, I'm assuming it wasn't 15 people when you first started. What kind of resources did you put against this when oh. you were first starting out? And then, and then how did that grow over time? Yeah, so, it's a good question. So, I mean, the, 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 the people behind me are sort of like we, Heinz Marketing does sort of B2B, you know, sort of project consulting that isn't really tied to the, the coffee talk community. Right. And so it's, you know, there's that ex that's existed for 15 years and then we continue yeah. to grow that. The, 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 the community itself, um, there's a full time community manager with six cents. Mm -hmm. Um, that really sort of serves as the backbone operationally to make this work. Um, you know, we've got a pretty, as you would imagine, kind of a special setup with Zoom. You know, we had to do some, <laughs> some custom trickery to get the okay. recurring thing to work and get the calendar invites to work. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Six Sense is invested in, so that we, they paid for converting the Slack group into pro so that all the archives would be available, which is huge. Okay. And, um, you know, it's, it's a fair amount of time, um, to put into it. I think, you know, we've gotten into a really good rhythm over the last couple of years of what it takes to do sort of just our weekly cadences, you know, coming up with topics, prepping speakers, facilitating Friday. Uh, we don't record, but we do save the chat transcripts and we published an anonymized set of chat highlights of the group back on Mondays. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, just we have a, we don't have like a published editorial calendar per se, but I think there are topics that come up that we try to encourage conversations around that we know CMOs are struggling with mm -hmm. on a seasonal basis or on a timely basis. Um, I, I think, you know, if you're thinking about resources, I would think about a couple things. One, you want to devote someone to being the backbone operational side of the community, and you need at least one or two people that can be the front of the house, right? To be the moderators. Mm -hmm. and, um, ideally, you know, if you can find someone that has some credibility in the space, it doesn't have to be one of your employees. You can bring someone in from the outside that can partner mm -hmm. with you on that. Um, but subject matter expert and then conversation facilitator is important. Um, and then having someone that can sort of make the back, the back end work really successfully. I mean, look, this is not something you can just do in your spare time, right? This isn't something yeah. you can just sort of say, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to create a community and people are just going to show up and talk like now you, like, it, you know, you talk to people like Heather Fay who have done this numerous times. I say, you have to be very intentional up front and devote a lot of time and effort to sparking the conversations and the threads and the discussions to create not only this body of content and threads and value for other people to see, mm -hmm. but an early adopter group of community members who are going to be your C group, who are going to be your proactive participants that are going to be the peer to peer stalwarts, you know, at least from the beginning, if not ongoing, like, I think there's a handful of people I could, I could mention that, you know, for the last three years have been super active in the community, but evangelists in terms of certain threads who have been, um, evangelists to other CMOs, they're like, Oh, you got to go join this group. Right. Um, and so to some of that, you know, if you get lightning in a bottle it happens naturally, but I think also just being intentional about seeding that, mm -hmm. um, to make it successful is, is, is huge. Okay, I'm going to ask you the last kind of question on it. I know that your intention was the right way. You put it, you put it out there in the, in the right way. It's authentic, but inevitably you're going to get probably some professional business, you know, through this community. Has that been the case for both you and, um, Six Sense out of, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. as a result yeah, of yeah. I mean, the benefit of, 
you know, having the roster of members in Salesforce, you know, and, and to be able to sort of see the attribution of like, okay, this, then that, um, that's been really helpful. Um, you know, just there, are, there are times when like in the community, someone will say, I'm looking for someone that can help us with our account based strategy. Think about our approach to it organically and help us build some playbooks. And I'm like, that's it. We do that all day long for our clients, but I'm not going to go in and pitch. Right. And uh, sometimes before I even ask, there'll be a couple other people community saying like, Oh, Matt's team does that. Right. And so, um, yeah, it, by treating it with respect, by not pitching, by making it a safe place. The halo effect for Heinz marketing and Sixth Sense is there for sure. Um, and it's, I'm constantly trying to find the value or find the balance between sort of being upfront about who we are and, and sort of being, you know, sort of, uh, prov you know, providing awareness around that, but also not pitching. And I'm going to err on the side of caution all day long because that is what is going to keep the community healthy. That's what is going to keep it growing. And, uh, we'll continue to benefit from that. And it's, it, look, it's not to your point, Alec, it's not a, um, this is not like, what can I get out of it this month or this quarter? This is a long game. You mm -hmm. know? I hope we can facilitate this community for a long time and continue to be an asset for CMOs, uh, but as well as for, for Heinz and Sixth Sense. How, how about any unexpected things, things that came out of this that you didn't even, didn't realize where you were going to get? Anything like that? Um, friendships, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um, just relationships and friendships with people, um, that either I didn't know before or that I knew purely professionally mm -hmm. and have just gotten to know a little better. Um, there's a handful of CMOs that are actually flying up right now to Seattle. Just not, not like literally like two or three that, you know, with a couple of folks here in Seattle, we're going to go grab some, grab lunch and uh, hang out at the Pikes market tomorrow. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, it's sort of, there are people in the community, but it was just sort of this organic thing. Someone else organized said like, Hey, come to Seattle. It's gonna be nice weather. Let's go get some lunch. Um, we see that happening, you know, in various markets. People getting together. There's a group of CMOs in the San Francisco Bay Area that went up to Marin and did a hike together um, oh, that's great. on their own. Right. Yeah. So I think the you know for, for me just professionally to sort of build those relationships and get you know some more professional friendships and those that have really gone beyond just work just become just people that I just consider dear friends now. Um, it's been really cool. That's great C community in the truest sense, right? Your tribe. That's, that's right. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess if we were wrapping this up, this is like perfect, right? Yeah. Um, what I'm hearing is to do this authentically, you've got to A, you know, be, do it with intention and start with the helping and the servant attitude rather yep. than the what you're going to get out of it attitude. Yep. Always um, be a safe place for the community, right? You know, non-recording probably adds to that, right? Mm -hmm. Where people can share a little bit more. Um if you do that right and you do that authentically, the business eventually does come, of course, it's yeah. inevitable. And really you're about making friends, right? Well, I, I think the, the friends has been a nice output of this, you know, but I think, you know, in hearing you summarize some of that, the sort of it, 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 it occurs to me that part of the success of this and doing a good community is not going full throttle, right? Like hmm. the maximum, if you sit and say, what's the maximum value I could get out of this community? Well, we would have some pitch sessions and we would record the sessions so we have more content to repurpose and yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. You have to pull back from doing that in some cases to, to give the community the oxygen and environment to thrive. And that compromise, that trade-off can be really difficult for some companies to accept. Um, but you have to have that commitment up front. You have to have that approach up front and a commitment to that over time to, to have something like this thrive. Yeah. The phrase less is more really applies here. Doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. and um, that allows you to gain the trust, build a friendship, mm -hmm. help each other. Right. I mean, that's where it really is germinating from. Yeah. So um, yeah. that's why well, that's, you know, <laughs> you know, what is life if not, you know, you know, sort of just supporting other people. And, right. uh, remember Eric Schmidt, who is, you know, you know, chairman and CEO of Google for a long time. Like he was on stage at Dreamforce one. And he said once and he said, uh, you know, life is short, work with people you enjoy. Right. I want to spend more time with people I enjoy. I yeah. want to spend more time with people that I can provide value to, but like we can just sort of enjoy each other's company and sort of try to get something valuable done. And, um, yeah, this has been such a great way to do that. Well, we've enjoyed spending the time with you. Thank you for joining the Marketing Share podcast. I think your insights are going to be very helpful for a bunch of folks. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks.